From early childhood, he was very advanced, clever and looked like someone that would achieve a lot of success in life. Even his mother said, if you become a soldier, you will be a general. If you become a monk, you will end up as the Pope. What an enormous expectation to impress on a child. Welcome to Personality Matters, I am Hugo and today we will be talking about Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso was born in Spain on October 25th, 1881. His real name is not limited only to Pablo Picasso, it is in fact a bit longer and includes 23 names. But let's stick to Pablo Picasso for simplicity's sake. So he started drawing at an early age and he did it so well that soon he surpassed his father who was also a painter. Little Pablo went to school but he found the lessons and the teachers so boring. Instead, he liked drawing in his notebook. Later on, his family settled down in Barcelona where he had a chance to be admitted in the School of Fine Arts. And that was despite the fact that he was only 14 years old. He was really too young for the school but he passed the entry exam with such impressive mastery that the jury decided to make an exception and accept him. Picasso also studied at the Academy of Fine Arts in Madrid. But apparently, even this school was not challenging enough for him. He was extremely bored, as the teachers were too fixated on copying classical styles and techniques. So, instead of attending lectures, he would go for long walks around the city as part of his self-education, observing people and objects, and then depicting them in the paintings. In fact, one of his defining characteristics as an artist was that he tried to remain experimental and even innovative during his whole career. As a result, Picasso often altered between styles and methods, which allowed him to create absolutely unique pictures. For him, painting was an avenue for total self-expression. As he once said, whenever I wanted to say something, I said it the way I believed I should. It was around that time that Picasso decided to break away from the traditional methods that had been the foundation of his training and set off on a lifelong journey of self-exploration. One of the main episodes in his career was the so-called Blue Period, and it was named like that not because Picasso was into recreational drugs, not at all. Blue was the predominant color in his works because he was mournful about the deaths of his close friend Carlos Casagemas. So, most of his paintings at the time were done in shades of blue and green. The Blue Period lasted from 1901 to 1904. During that time, Picasso lived between Paris and Barcelona, but eventually he settled down in Paris, which was back then undeniably the European capital of art. Well, Parisian would definitely say that it is still today, but let's debate the topic some other day. Anyways, after the Blue Period came the Rose Period, and again, it had nothing to do with illicit substances. It was closely related to the colors he used and subjects he painted. In 1907, Picasso created one of his most famous works, Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. The picture represents the interior of a brothel. In many ways, the painting was revolutionary. One, because the painting style was completely different from that of traditional art in the Western world. Two, Picasso used the distortion technique to challenge the expectations that paintings should offer an idealized image of female beauty. And three, the painting was the starting point of Cubism, the artistic movement that is characterized by a geometric language in depictions of human and other forms. In fact, so innovative was the painting that Picasso was extremely hesitant to show it to the public. Thus, it remained unseen until 1916 according to an article in History Journal. One of the first people to see the picture was the like-minded fellow painter named Georges Braque. And here's how he described his impression, quote, It made me feel as if someone was drinking gasoline and spitting fire. Well, it's definitely not the kind of feeling you get very often, not even after a strong hangover. Anyways, apart from this poetic description, Braque became more interested in Cubism as he saw it as a revolutionary art movement. In Picasso's own words, the definition of Cubism is a head is a matter of eyes, nose and mouth, which can be distributed in any way you like. Confusing, right? I know. In fact, back then very few critics grasped the meaning of early Cubist painting. Often, the paintings were considered as geometric art. Meanwhile, those who pioneered Cubism considered it as a new art form different from Renaissance traditions. They believed that their paintings conveyed more information to the spectator by depicting several views of an object on the same canvas. Anyways, Picasso kept evolving in Cubism for years. Influenced by certain ideas, trends and events, he also changed, which found its way into his works too. For instance, his interest in surrealism led him to creating one of his most famous works, Guernica, 
1937, because he was terrified by the atrocities of the civil war that was raging in his home country of Spain. Guernica is seen as one of the most powerful anti-war paintings in history. After the Second World War, Picasso was closely involved in politics. He even joined the Communist Party. In general, in the 1950s and 1960s, he was already an international celebrity, the most famous living artist who was often chronicled by paparazzi. He continued to work making art until the end of his life, on April 8, 1973. During his entire life, Picasso had numerous relationships with different women, but he was married only twice and had four children. Picasso's productivity has already become legend. Indeed, he was an extremely prolific artist. For instance, he managed to create more than 100 works of art in a single year. This is outstanding. If you dream of being as productive as he was, well, here's a tip. Picasso was a wealthy person who was driven everywhere by a personal driver, and he dedicated all his free time to art. So the tip is to be wealthy and pay others to do non-essential tasks for you. That will free up your time so that you can dedicate it all to your passion. Thank you for watching Personality Matters. We talk about those who made the world. I am Hugo, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and leave a comment.